Our mystery town features a lively and attractive Main Street, including the original Rennie's, Maine's beloved homegrown department store. No designer duds here, Rennie's remains a defiantly practical upcountry institution. For more whimsical supplies, there's a barn a few miles outside of town. We started with 16 artists in the barn and those artists liked working with us and so they recommended their friends and now there are over 100 artists we're working with. Catherine McLechie's barn is filled to the rafters with handcrafted one-of-a-kinds. We are trying to have the range where kids can come in and buy something with their allowance money, but also, it sounds bizarre, people can click and ship museum quality art. We're trying to have um, things for everyone, every age, every gifting occasion. McLechi doesn't claim to be an artist herself, but one might say the barn itself is her grand creation. It was like naivete and ignorance were really our friends. The barn was falling down when I moved here and the fire department wanted to use it as a practice burn. <laughs> but that is how we were able to afford the property and my husband and I fixed it up with friends. A lot of beer and lobster went into the repair of the barn. McGletchie was born in the South and had migrated to the Pacific Northwest when she and her husband were asked to help restore his family's Down East fishing camp. One summer in Maine and McGletchie realized her wandering was over. She was home. And I was on a roof in my bathing suit overlooking the ocean, you know, with the nail gun going, and I just knew that life couldn't be better. They packed up and moved to Maine shortly after. People, when we started this venture, they were very suspect, unsure that it would work. What are you doing out here, isolated on the peninsula? And I would just answer folks and say, hey, this is where the artists live. I don't know, there's some cool folks hanging out in the woods here. <laughs> A few minutes away, a common local site, a tide pool. But if salt ponds like this are common, they are also extraordinarily complex. Little self-contained worlds, gardens of color, manifesting all the infinite richness of the oceans in miniature. And here's another hint about where we are. This one is famous. This tide pool served as the inspiration for the 1955 book, The Edge of the Sea, by famed environmentalist Rachel Carson. Our mystery Main Street's location features a small village on a harbor. At its heart, an historic general store. It's like stepping back in time. The Granite Hall store is indeed a classic, a warren of tiny rooms stuffed to the gills with a mix of necessities and novelties. I'll do the sharks. How many of these do you want? Three. Three. And of course, there is an awesome wall of penny candy jars. When I first bought the place 40 years ago, one of the things the woman said that had been running it only for two years, she said, first thing I do is get rid of the penny candy. And I've always thought that would have been the kiss of death. Luckily for local dentists and generations of sweet tooth customers, Sarah Herndon ignored that advice. Tradition and history are part of what this store sells. The feeling of the past is all through it. That's what I love about it. Yeah, I, I always feel like there's ghosts dancing upstairs. You see, the upstairs room was once a dance hall and performance space, as well as a silent movie theater. This old screen is still up there, the old piano. Town meetings, a barber shop, and billiard hall, this old building has seen a lot. And of course, there are the scandalous rumors that illicit beverages were once dispensed in a back room. That's why this is nicknamed the saloon. <laughs> Today, her daughters Mary and Jane are preparing to take the helm of this local landmark. They both stayed in the community, married local boys. One's married to a farmer and one's married to a furniture maker. And I have four grandchildren that have all worked here and been running in and out. It's, it's been a wonderful lifestyle. 
Sarah Herndon and her young family actually lived upstairs in the general store for a few years. For the kids, it was pure torment living in a candy store where they were allowed one candy a day. Of course, when the Herndons moved out to a house of their own, little piles of penny candy wrappers were found behind their furniture. All right, not much more time to weigh in, so get your guesses in, because up next, one more clue until our big reveal.